Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna dive into one of the most fierce anime series out there, Hajime no Ippo. Now, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a video. Let's get it. Hajime no Ippo is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by George Morikawa. The manga began serialization in Kondansha's weekly shonen magazine in 1989 and is still ongoing, making it one of the longest running manga series. With over 139 volumes, consisting of over 1,442 chapters. The anime adaptation by Madhouse Studios first hit the screens on October 4, 2000 and continued until March 27, 2002, with a total of 76 episodes spread between 14 arcs. Now, let's get into the story, the early days arc. One day a high school student named Ippo Makanouchi is on his way home after school to his family's fishing boat business. As he heads home, a group of classmates confronts and beats him until a jogger stops by and intervenes, rescuing Ippo and taking him to the Kamogawa boxing gym. Awakening in the gym, Ippo is bewildered but intrigued. The jogger is Takamura, a boxer who, impressed by Ippo's resilience, challenges him to punch a drawing of one of his bullies, Umazawa, taped to a sandbag. After initial failures, Ippo eventually lands a powerful punch, surprising everyone in the gym. Takamura, drawing parallels between Mike Tyson's own struggles, introduces Ippo to boxing through Tyson's videos, igniting Ippo's desire to become stronger. Under Takamura's guidance, Ippo begins training, catching the attention of the Kamogawa Genji, a seasoned coach skeptical of Ippo's potential. To test Ippo's abilities, Kamogawa arranges a spar with Miyata Ichiro, a highly skilled boxer. Their first spar unfolds with Miyata dominating, showcasing his superior footwork and punching prowess. Despite being knocked down twice and enduring punishing blows, Ippo's unyielding spirit impresses everyone. Kamogawa recognizes Ippo's raw potential, decides to train him further, giving him three months to prepare for a rematch against Miata. Determined to defeat Miata, Ippo undergoes grueling training, focusing on perfecting the uppercut technique. His training involves shadow boxing, getting new boxing shoes, and relentless practice against Miata's shadow. The highly anticipated rematch between Ippo and Miata finally arrives. Ippo's progress shines as he dominates the match, causing Miata to resort to unfamiliar tactics like clinching. Both fighters face multiple knockdowns in a grueling battle that ends in Ippo's victory, delivered through a seemingly missed uppercut that only lands by a mere centimeter. What? Miyata then quits Kamogawa Gym and tells Ippo that he wants to face him as an equal in the professional ring, aiming to settle their one-to-one -one score in the Rookie King Tournament. Leading us to the debut arc. While Miyata is away, Ippo's strength diminishes, prompting Kamogawa to pair him with Takamura for training, just a week before Takamura's match. Curious about Takamura's boxing origins, Ippo learns of Kamogawa's discovery of Takamura during a street fight, sparking his boxing career. Witnessing Takamura's struggles as a pro sheds light on the harsh reality of the sport for Ippo. As Takamura's match against Hirano Kazuhiko approaches, the seasoned boxer effortlessly triumphs, showcasing his dominance and skill. Fuji introduces Ippo and Miyata to Mashiba Ryo, whose intimidating demeanor unnerves Miyata with a direct insult to his father. Skipping ahead, both Ippo and Mashiba undertake their protests. Mashiba's ruthless display of the hitman style, brutal even after his opponent loses consciousness, secures his victory. Ippo's test contrasts this, showcasing his ability to read and anticipate his opponent's moves, winning with ease. Mashiba, aiming to clear the featherweight class, urges Ippo to change weight classes, but Ippo, bound by his promise to Miyata, declines. Umezawa and his gang then steal Ippo's pro license, but Ippo showcasing his new skills against them retrieves his pro card, impressing his former bullies. Takamura then exposes Ippo to Mashiba's intimidating flicker jab through video recording of his latest match, setting the stage for Ippo's pro debut against Oda Yusuke 
from Nishiwa Boxing Gym. Preparation for the match is marked by Ippo's interaction with Oda, whose dedication intensifies upon learning of Ippo's insulting remarks. In the ring, the fight unfolds with intensity. Ippo starts off defensively, engaging in an exchange of punches, and after a colossal body blow, Oda manages to cut Ippo above his eye, leading to a brief halt for medical attention, where Ippo thinks he may be TKO'd from the match due to his wound. However, after their match resumes, Ippo, worry of the targeted wound, switches to the southpaw stance, surprising Oda. In a decisive move, Ippo seizes an opportunity during Oda's attack, unleashing a barrage of right jabs that incapacitate Oda, securing his victory. <laughs> Post-match, Mikami, Oda's coach, reaffirms Oda's boxing future. The gang then celebrates at Sugar Ray's, marking Ippo's victorious debut as a real boxer. Bringing us to the third part in the series, the Rookie King Tournament First Rounder arc. As the East Rookie King Tournament schedule is announced, marking Ippo's first match against Jason Ozuma, a formidable opponent, both fighters prepare intensely. Ippo trains rigorously to dodge Ozuma's hooks after Ozuma's sparring partner is hospitalized due to his crazy strength. Despite initial struggles, Ippo eventually masters the technique. On fight day, Ippo is surprised by Ozuma's friendly demeanor during their weigh-in. Back home, Ippo's mother refuses to watch the match, fearing for her son's safety. The fight commences fiercely, with both boxers exchanging blows. Ozuma knocks Ippo down twice, but Ippo fights back, landing a body blow that stuns Ozuma. In an intense series of punches, Ippo knocks Ozuma out, winning the match and earning the respect of his opponent. As Ippo progresses, he supports Miata in his match against Takata, witnessing Miata's victory. With the next opponent, Kobashi, coming up, Ippo receives tapes of Kobashi's fights and undergoes rigorous training, including a beach camp led by Takamura. On the night before their match, Ippo encounters Kobashi outside the gym, learning that boxing is more than just power and technique. Meanwhile, Kobashi's coach emphasizes strategy over knockout punches. On the day of their match, Kobashi maintains his distance and defense, frustrating Ippo's attempts to land a clean hit. As exhaustion sets in for Ippo, Kobashi gains confidence and becomes more aggressive. In a critical moment, Ippo finds an opening and delivers a decisive blow, knocking Kobashi down and securing his victory. <laughs> Following Ippo's win, the focus shifts to Takamura's title match against Yajima for the JBC Middleweight Championship. Takamura faces initial setbacks, but retaliates with a powerful uppercut, dominating the champion until he can't continue. Takamura then becomes the new champion, and as they walk home together, he expresses his wish for Ippo to claim the rookie title, bringing us to the Rookie King Tournament Finals arc. In the lead-up to the semi-finals of the Rookie King Tournament, Ippo faces Hayami, a formidable opponent with a reputation for taking down infighters. With guidance from Kamogawa, Ippo trains defensively to counter Hayami's short uppercut. The match unfolds with Hayami challenging Ippo to an infight, but Ippo counters Hayami's strategies, ultimately defeating him by exploiting his weaknesses. Simultaneously, in the B-Block semi-finals, Miyata confronts Mashiba, who employs underhanded tactics, stepping on Miata's foot to gain an advantage during their match. Despite Miata's efforts and determination, Mashiba's deceitful moves lead to Miata's defeat, leaving a message for Ippo to forgive him through his father. The stage is now set for the finals, Ippo versus Mashiba. While Ippo's training intensifies, a setback occurs when he injures his fists, forcing him to train without using them for two weeks. Back to their training, Kamagawa reveals Mashiba's weakness, his lowered left guard while using the Hitman style, prompting Ippo's intense dash training to overcome the reach difference between them. As the finals commence, Ippo faces Mashiba's unorthodox techniques, struggling initially but gradually finding openings to attack. In a tense second round, Ippo relentlessly targets Mashiba's left arm, rendering it immobile. However, Mashiba's resilience surfaces, driven by memories of his sister, enabling him to strike Ippo down. Ippo rises and continues his assault, focusing on Mashiba's body. In a dramatic turn, Mashiba rallies, landing a decisive blow on Ippo, who counters with a flurry of hits, ultimately flooring Mashiba for the win.
Despite the challenges and emotional stakes, Ippo emerges victorious, claiming the title of featherweight East Japan Rookie King and receiving recognition as the most talented rookie in the tournament. With this title secured, we enter the All Japan Rookie King Tournament Rocky of Naniwa arc. In the aftermath of winning the East Japan Rookie King Tournament, Ippo faces a setback as he discovers his right fist is injured, forcing him to withdraw from the All Japan Rookie King Tournament. This leads him to question his boxing future. Meanwhile, Takeshi Sendo, the West Japan Rookie King, intrigued by Ippo, visits the Kamogawa Gym, revealing a hidden technique he developed, the smash, specifically for Ippo. Sendo's reason for boxing, his admiration for strong opponents, becomes clear during his interactions with Ippo. A bond begins to form between these two fighters, with Sendo showcasing his skills by sparring against Takamura, despite the weight class difference. This encounter fuels Ippo's determination, prompting him to explore unconventional methods, including seeking treatment for his injuries and training intensely to face Sendo. As the match between Ippo and Sendo approaches, both undergo rigorous training. Ippo struggles with his injured fist, seeking alternative ways to fight effectively against Sendo's formidable smash technique. Despite doubts and physical limitations, Ippo is determined to give his best in the ring. The highly anticipated match unfolds with intense exchanges between Ippo and Sendo. Ippo faces challenges as Sendo's powerful punches push him to his limits. Despite Ippo's efforts, Sendo's resilience remains a formidable obstacle. The fight reaches its climax with both fighters delivering powerful blows, culminating in Ippo landing a decisive hit to Sendo's temple. In a surprise turn, Sendo, though appearing unaffected, is revealed to have been unconscious throughout the final moments of the match. Ippo then emerges as the victor, crowned as the Rookie King, yet he remains conflicted, feeling that the win was surreal and still considering Sendo a worthy opponent. With Ippo's match against Sendo concluded, we then begin the Two Rookie Kings arc. After Ippo's graduation, Miyata reveals he's headed to South Korea and Thailand to improve his boxing skills. Meanwhile, at Kamogawa Gym, a surge of aspiring boxers arrives, led by Yamada, a dedicated Ippo fan. Despite a hectic trial, Yamada earns Ippo's mentorship. Meanwhile, Ippo encounters the reigning champion, Date Eji sparking curiosity about Date's skill compared to other formidable boxers like Sendo, Mashiba, and Miata. A month later, Ippo's recovered right fist marks his readiness for action. A sparring opportunity emerges with Date at Nakadai Gym, where Ippo faces Date's corkscrew blow technique. The spar is intense with Ippo pushed to his limits, ultimately succumbing to Date's heartbreak shot. Nevertheless, Ippo's resilience impresses Date, leaving a lasting impact. Reflecting on the spar, Ippo shares his own struggles with Yamada, who finds inspiration in Ippo's perseverance through adversity. Meanwhile, rumors about Date's future plans create uncertainty for Ippo, who yearns for a chance to face the champion in the ring. After this, Ippo is then challenged by Okita, the former rookie king. Their bout showcases Okita's skills, particularly his corkscrew blow, challenging Ippo's defensive strategy. Yet, Ippo rallies, overwhelming Okita and earning a hard-fought victory. Okita's admiration for Date and his resolve to follow in his idol's footsteps are what push him to face Ippo. However, Ippo's victory instigates a confrontation between Date and Suzuki Toshio. Date triumphs with a powerful display, refusing to relinquish his title and glaring at Ippo, who responds with a confident glare of his own. This encounter leaves Ippo ranked fifth and sparks a sense of determination within him, leading us to the Jolt Counter Arc. Back in Thailand, Miata is challenged by Jimmy Sisfar, who Miata's father recognizes as just a fame-seeking clout demon, and refuses the match, believing Miata needs confidence-building wins. Miata, facing local skepticism due to language barriers, 
learns of perceptions about Japanese fighters from Peyo, who believes Jimmy is too strong. Miata challenges his father's decision, though, aiming to face Jimmy to prove himself. Despite his father's concerns about Jimmy's strength and mismatched styles, Miata resolves to fight meeting Chana, a fan wanting to learn Miata's counter. Miata reconsiders his technique. Meanwhile, Miata's father studies Jimmy, realizing his son's determination. During training, Miata struggles until he glimpses the essence of boxing happiness. He then spars with Peo, revealing his improvement and his father notices Miata nearing a breakthrough. On match day, Miata battles his nerves. His father and Kida acknowledge his development, but warn him of Jimmy's prowess. Miata recalls Ippo's determination, boosting his confidence. As the fight unfolds, the crowd favors Jimmy, but Miata's supporters arrive, believing in his potential. Despite setbacks and a ruptured eardrum, Miata employs his new technique, the jolt counter, after analyzing Jimmy's movements. In a decisive moment, Miata executes the counter, knocking down Jimmy and ultimately winning the match. <laughs> Embracing his victory, Miata shares a moment of joy with Chana and experiences a rare laugh. Departing Thailand, Miata imparts wisdom to Chana about timing and putting his heart into boxing. Bringing us to the Class A Tournament Speed Star Arc. Due to a new popularity in boxing, famous idol Kumiko Morita visits Kamogawa Gym for a television segment on youth boxing. This visit inadvertently reveals Ippo's challenge to the JBC featherweight champion Date, setting the stage for their future match. Meanwhile, Yamada passes his protest and the Class A tournament entry list is announced, stirring up excitement among gym members. However, Ippo's preparations for the tournament take a hit when his mother is hospitalized due to overwork. Feeling responsible, Ippo juggles his commitment to boxing with helping out at the fishing boat business contemplating retirement to support his mother. Amidst the turmoil, Ippo decides to continue boxing as a hobby while aiding his mother. However, his resolve strengthens when he receives encouragement from his former bully Umezawa, who intervenes during a typhoon, reigniting Ippo's passion for the sport. Despite his initial retirement, Ippo eventually returns to the gym, eliciting surprise and joy from his peers. As the Class A tournament approaches, Ippo faces Saiki Takuma, an outboxer with exceptional speed and skill. The match unfolds with strategic maneuvers from both fighters, but Ippo faces a setback when Psyche exploits his right eye's swelling, creating a blind spot and gaining an advantage. Despite the challenge, Ippo persists, driven by his desire to reassure those concerned about him. He adapts his strategy, aiming for body blows when Psyche is cornered and eventually manages to overcome his opponent's precise rhythm and exploit his blind spot. The fight concludes with Ippo's victory, marking his triumph in the final round of the tournament. With Ippo back in action, we are led to the Class A Tournament White Fang arc. The second match of the Featherweight Class A Tournament begins between White Fang Vogue and Suzuki, where Vogue impressively defeats Suzuki with his White Fang technique. Ippo is taken aback by Vogue's stoic demeanor after winning. Skipping ahead, the members of Kamagawa Boxing Gym celebrate two of their members, Kimura and Aoki, winning their matches in the junior and lightweight divisions at the Giant Echo Karaoke Bar, where Yamada reveals he's moving away and they all wish him goodbye. Later, as the semifinals of the Class A tournament continue, Aoki and Kimura both lose, revealing their determination to prove their worth and secure a title match. Amidst this, Takamura's unconventional motivational methods, including a discovery of his JVC belt, motivate the entire crew. After talking to Takamura about their fights, Ippo begins training to face Volg. Kamogawa introduces the gazelle punch as a new technique aiming to counter Volg's fighting style. Stand. The much anticipated Class A tournament final between Ippo and Volg then unfolds, depicting a fierce battle. Volg's dominant performance challenges Ippo's endurance and fighting spirit. However, Ippo's resilience shines through, surprising Volg and his coach, Ramuda. 
The match intensifies with both fighters pushing their limits. Ippo's use of the gazelle punch stuns Volk, revealing his vulnerability. Despite Ippo's injuries and exhaustion, he continues to fight, showcasing remarkable determination and heart throughout the match. As the rounds progress, Ippo's strategic adaptation against Volk's attacks become evident. Both fighters exchange powerful blows, testing each other's strength and resolve. Ippo's courage and relentless pursuit of victory eventually leads him to overcoming Volg with one more gazelle punch, winning the tournament. Date, observing from a distance, sees Ippo as an ultimate challenger, bringing us to the challenge for the throne arc. In the aftermath of his match with Volg, Ippo ends up in the hospital. During his stay, he encounters Kumi, who turns out to be the sister of Ryo Mashiba. This chance meeting leads to a group date where Ippo ends up paired with Kumi, sparking some nervousness due to Ryo's intimidating presence. Meanwhile, preparations for Ippo's upcoming match against Date intensify. Date, a seasoned and experienced boxer with a significant past, is set to face Ippo. It's this point in the story where we find out Date previously suffered a heartbreaking loss to the world champion in Mexico years ago, leading to his retirement from boxing. However, fueled by a desire to regain his former glory, Date made a comeback and became the Japanese champion once again. Meanwhile, as the champion carnival approaches, Takamura defends his title successfully, showcasing the weight and responsibility of being a champion. His words about the champion's special power leave Ippo pondering. Meanwhile, Mashiba claims the junior lightweight title, setting new goals for himself and his competitors. Eventually, Ippo's pivotal match against Date begins. The fight unfolds with Ippo showcasing his growth and determination, going back and forth relentlessly throughout the fight. By the fifth round, Date's experience and strategic prowess start to overpower Ippo. Despite Ippo's relentless efforts, Date's ability to predict and neutralize Ippo's attacks takes a toll on him. In a significant moment, Date lands a devastating heartbreak shot, resulting in Ippo's first career loss. The match ends with mutual respect and gratitude between the two boxers. Miyata is then spotted watching the match, having finally returned to Japan, bringing us to the road back arc. The morning after his loss, Ippo discovers Date has relinquished the belt, and that Sendo and Volg would be fighting for the title in two months. He grapples with disappointment, seeking solace and spending time with Kumi, expressing his regrets and recognizing the importance of winning for those who have supported him. Watching the tape of his defeat against Date, Ippo realizes his lack of determination compared to Date's unwavering commitment to victory. Meanwhile, a championship match between Sendo and Volg unfolds, echoing the determination Ippo lacked during his own fight. Sendo wins, claiming the JBC featherweight belt but expresses a desire for a rematch with Ippo. Amidst Ippo's training for a comeback match against Ponchai Chuatana, Komagawa collapses due to overwork, leading both of them to think deeply about their fighting style and true goals. Ippo dedicates himself to improving his techniques, adopting a defensive strategy inspired by Mike Tyson's elusive style. As Ippo along with Aoki and Kimura prepare for their comeback matches, the story intensifies with Ippo's training sessions and growing nervousness about facing Ponchai, an opponent known for his toughness and intense stamina. However, Ippo finds inspiration and confidence in devising a strategy against Ponchai's style. The day the match arrives, Aoki and Kimura triumph in their bouts. But Ippo's fight against Ponchai becomes a challenging test of willpower. Employing the Dempsey role, an unexpected technique, Ippo dominates the match, ultimately winning by a technical knockout. <laughs> Celebrating his victory, Ippo accepts Sendo's rematch request, indicating his renewed determination and readiness to reclaim his position in the boxing world, bringing us to Aoki and Kimura's delinquent youth days arc. Ippo, Aoki, and Kimura remember their troubled past and how boxing guided by Takamura transformed their lives. 
Despite never landing a hit on Takamura in training, their gratitude for the sport fuels their ambition to surpass him one day. Meanwhile, in Osaka, Kamigawa and Yagi watch Sendo's first title defense against Saiki Takuma. Shocked with how much Sendo is overwhelming Saiki, Sendo quickly defeats the speed star in a round one knockout, defending his title for the first time, leading us to the mountain training arc. After watching Sendo's title defense win against Saiki, Kamogawa and Yagi are approached by Sendo, who asks to let him fight Ippo as soon as possible. Kamogawa tells him that he will, as Ippo will be the number one contender soon, but warns Sendo that they're coming for the JBC championship belt. Sendo dismissing the threat says he's not afraid of Ippo's technique. Kamogawa then organizes a challenging training camp in the mountains to prepare Ippo for the fight. There, Ippo learns about the famous Dempsey roll technique's limitations and seeks to refine it further. Skipping ahead, Date advises Ippo to reconsider the Dempsey roll's ability against a relentless opponent like Sendo. But the intense training led by Nakota, an old rival of Kamogawa's, focuses on honing Ippo's strength and skills. During the camp, Ippo grapples with the incomplete nature of the Dempsey roll. Kamogawa and Nakota share experiences and reveal the importance of mental strength in boxing, not just physical. Nakota's wisdom and teachings resonate deeply with Ippo as he grapples with the pressure and expectations of the upcoming fight. Meanwhile, Ippo struggles in a sparring match against a southpaw boxer named Shigeta Akira, providing insight into Ippo's learning curve against unorthodox boxers. Back at the gym, a female sports writer, Mary, takes an interest in Ippo's progress. While back in the ring, Takamura defends his title in a unique match, relying solely on his left hand, showcasing dominance and sparking discussions within the boxing community. Nakota's guidance becomes invaluable to the gym's members, fostering improvement and a sense of community. But due to his own ego, Nakota and Kamogawa have a falling out resulting in Nakota's departure from the gym. Ippo then receives tickets to witness Sendo's title defense match against Shigeta, marking the approach of a critical moment in Ippo's journey throughout the boxing world. Leading to the final part of the series, the Lollapalooza arc. The JBC featherweight title match between Sendo Takeshi and Shigeta Akira unfolds at the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium. Ippo and Kamogawa encounter Sendo's grandmother before the fight begins. In a shocking turn, Shigeta dominates the first round, leaving Sendo rattled. Ippo offers strategies, but Kamogawa observes the fundamental difference between Sendo and Ippo's fighting styles. Sendo's left smash is parried by Shigeta, who capitalizes on Sendo's vulnerability, ending round one in his favor. Round two sees Sendo missing attacks while Shigeta lands powerful hits. Kamogawa recognizes Shigeta's formidable right hand, a remnant of his past as a right-handed fighter. Despite Sendo's furious response, Shigeta continues to dominate, revealing his intent to give Sendo's fans more of the same. The third round sees Shigeta dismiss Ippo and Kamogawa as ordinary. Sendo, driven by anger, reveals improved speed and strategy, targeting Shigeta's lower body. With a calculated move, Sendo downs Shigeta, unveiling his trainer's expertise in understanding boxing's physical limits. In the end, Sendo secures victory with relentless blows breaking Shigeta both physically and mentally. Post-match, Sendo announces a rematch with Ippo, aiming to redeem his lackluster performance. Ippo pledges to win the upcoming title match, earning respect from the crowd. Meanwhile, Kamogawa recognizes the fear instilled in Shigeta, cautioning Ippo about Sendo's ability to sow dread into his opponents. In the lead-up to the highly anticipated JBC featherweight title match between Ippo and Sendo, Tensions rise as both fighters prepare themselves mentally and physically for the battle ahead. With the tickets sold out and the match drawing closer, the atmosphere becomes charged with anticipation. Ippo discusses his thoughts about Sendo with Marie, expressing his concerns about Sendo's widened stance and how it might impede his ability to use his signature Dempsey roll technique. This leads Ippo to contemplate the nature of their fight, viewing it not merely as a title match, but as a deeper clash of ideals and abilities. As the match day approaches, both fighters display nervousness and excitement in their own ways. They encounter each other during the weigh-in, where Ippo is surprised by Sendo's seemingly relaxed demeanor, despite the underlying anticipation and nerves they both feel. The interaction between the two reveals mutual respect and acknowledgement of their shared history and rivalry. The final match then begins. In a series of intense rounds filled with exchanges, each fighter showcasing their strength and strategies. 
Ippo gains an early advantage with the Dempsey roll, knocking down Sendo and demonstrating his growth since their last encounter. However, Sendo's resilience and determination become evident as he fights back, pushing Ippo into a corner and showcasing his own formidable skills. The fight continues with both boxers exchanging powerful blows, each displaying just how much they've grown since their previous match. Sendo's ferocity and Ippo's perseverance are on full display as they exchange heavy hits and endure tremendous physical pain. As the rounds progress, the battle becomes more grueling, both physically and mentally, with both fighters pushing themselves to their limits. Ippo manages to break Sendo's guard, leading to a dramatic sequence where Sendo is knocked down, but he refuses to stay down, displaying his unwavering spirit. In the seventh round, with both boxers exhausted yet refusing to yield, Ippo and Sendo exchange powerful punches, each aiming for their victory. Ultimately, Ippo's determination and tactical prowess prevails as he delivers a series of devastating blows, culminating in Sendo's defeat and Ippo being crowned the new JBC featherweight champion. The aftermath sees a mix of emotions and reflections. Sendo, despite his defeat, retains his pride and vows to return stronger. Ippo, while celebrating his victory, grapples with the meaning of true strength, realizing that it's a complex and ongoing journey rather than a mere destination or title. And that is the end of Hajime no Ippo. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and slap the bell notification icon so you never miss another video. Until next time, peace.